Welcome to Camera Ready and Able, the podcast that explores the intersection of media change and personal growth. I'm your host, Barbara Barna Able, and my calling is to help you tap into your superpowers to thrive on camera and in life, and to make an impact on the world. This episode is brought to you by the phrase, how to stay in the room. It's one thing to get in the room, it's a whole other strategy to stay there. Here to discuss is returning champion, Buki Alegbidi. The last time Buki was here, he explained how his work ethic superpower is what allowed him to build relationships and get in the room, which led him to create, executive produce, and host Table for All, his multiple Emmy award-winning PBS series, focusing on food, culture, and diversity. Welcome back to the podcast, Buki. Thanks, Barbara. It's always good to be back. <laughs> Why? Thank you. It's always a joy for me to spend time with you. And um, so we have to start right away by saying congratulations, because last time you were here, you were an Emmy nominee. Yes. Now you are a multiple Emmy winner. <laughs> And I'm really, yeah. really, I'm really happy and proud for you. And I have to tell you, like, my heart was so full when I, you know, Aww. saw the announcement. Thank you. I, I mean, well earned. We've, we, we, we feel good. It's good. It's good to, it's good to have a couple behind you. Um, <laughs> that's for sure. But as, as you know, the work doesn't stop. So here yeah, we so go. We're gonna, yeah. So <laughs> we're going to get into it. But um, starting off, I wanted to confirm though, that, you know, you've had two seasons and Emmy wins. So we, do we have a season three coming up? A season three will be coming. It this will is, be coming. Congratulations. This is, you Thank know, this you. is a rough climate. So it is again, well earned. I'm very happy for you. So Thank to recap, I actually want to back up and start to remind people who may not have heard the previous episode, which I will link in the show notes. Uh, what are, you know, what are Buki's top tips to getting in the room? And what does that mean to you? Oh, oh my goodness gracious. Uh, well, that is, whew. Um, which room are we talking about? Because we're we're still trying to get into rooms. I'll tell you that. So <laughs> that's I mean, actually a really fair point. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's funny because every when we were doing going through this whole Emmy experience, everyone was like, "Oh my God, you're so happy!" Da, 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 da. Are you so excited? I'm like, uh, "Sure, yeah," but you know, I I like I just got to base camp one, and then I look up. And I still have an entire mountain to climb. So, you know, it's it feels good to make it to base camp one, but we still have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 to go. Um, so, but what I say is, um, you know, in in life, and, and I feel like this has been a, a recurring theme for a lot of people, whether it's with friendships, whether it's with dating, or whether it's with your job or your calling, is that no one wants to put in the effort. It's weird. It's like everyone just decided, I don't want to put in the effort. And I mean, the only person that's hurting is yourself. So, you know, perfect example, I'm trying to hire the producer for this third season. And I think I've interviewed about 30 or so people and only four have written thank you notes. And for me, who is an A-type control freak OCD person, I can't even imagine not writing a thank you note. But I mean, those are like the things. It's all about the little things, remembering someone's name, introducing yourself to everyone on set. People remember that, especially the people who aren't used to getting that sort of attention. Uh, so I always say it's it's those little, little fine details. And honestly, it goes back to the golden rule. Treat others how you want to be treated and you'll you'll get in some rooms. And to that, I want to add your work ethic, which was the whole yes. point of the first episode you did with me and explaining how work ethic is a superpower, because it goes back to what you're saying is it's it, it's little and big. It's putting in the time. It's showing up. It's being professional, on time, prepared. Um, Absolutely understanding uh yeah and those yeah. are not like options that is the requ that's like required <laughs> for those of us for people who think that's optional to show up on time and be prepared that's not an option like that's that's literally baseline level for just i don't want to put that on record um yeah we i could go down that rabbit hole to remind everyone because now i have adult children by the way and the reason <laughs> i'm saying this is because we're not doing anybody a favor when um the you know just showing up is is, is award worthy um only because the real world doesn't work that way not at all the vast majority of us 
And um, and to your point, it's something Elizabeth Wagmeister, who just joined CNN as their you know LA-based entertainment contributor, she said on my podcast originally, "Be really good at the job you were hired for." Everybody knows you know you have ambitions, but if you're not good at the job you were hired for, that is what people will remember. Very true. Very true. And I think that you know everybody I've had on the podcast, along with you, it's really it does kind of boil down to work ethic, integrity you know, values really showing up and understanding why that matters. And the reason I'm happy to start this way on the podcast is a reminder for listeners how much this really does matter because it's the, I don't believe it's a secret to success. It is the requirements to success and we're just sharing it and talking about it. So it's like to demystify the information's just there. You're, you explain it beautifully. It's not That's a mysterious true. process. How you went from being, well, this is what I meant. You went from being a kid in New Jersey with no contacts. Yes. <laughs> with absolutely not a one contact. And then, you know, you just got to, you just got to make your way. And, um, you know, we'll get into it about, you know, staying in the room. But, you know, that's, it's what it's, you just, it's just little tinkering away, whether it's writing an email, whether it's, you know, collaborating with friends you know it's it, it just everything to keep the juices flowing um and then you know you'll you'll you eventually get there i mean it's not gonna it's not gonna be tomorrow i'll tell you that <laughs> but it'll be it'll be soon enough that's right delayed gratification we all gotta play the long game so for argument's sake i'm gonna say buki allegbity you are in the room you're certainly in the room at pbs and um for anyone who is, is not watching on YouTube, um, the Emmy, one of them, is over your shoulder right now. So I, yes. I really keep harping on it because I'm just so thrilled for you. Yes, um, yeah. Okay, so you're in the room, man. How do you stay there? Uh, so it's so funny because I, um, I, th I think we talked about this last time off camera, but I always tell people that, you know, following your dream um, is like waiting in line at the DMV. <laughs> And your number is 5,100. And they just called 65. <laughs> Don't go get a sandwich. Don't go take a nap. Don't go, you know, hang out with friends and oh, I'll be right right on back. Because as soon as you come back, they're going to be on 15,101. <laughs> and you're going to be pissed. <laughs> um, so for me, staying in the room, like I said before, it's it's just that constant working on whatever. So during the pandemic, you know, everything was shut down. No one was hiring, blah, blah, blah. But I was with my little prompter um, on my phone every night. Let's go through a script. Let's let's go through a script. Let's do something. Um, you know, I hear, I heard a lot of that during the strike as well as during the pandemic. Oh, the industry shut down. There's nothing to do. No, actually there's plenty to do because you're you're not perfect. I am not a perfect host or producer. There's always something to be learned. There's always something to do. So for me, staying in the room is just that. Whatever it is that your goal is, if you want to be a baker, I better see a I better see a baguette, a cupcake, a something in your house at least once a day. Like always working on yourself, I feel like is the way to get in the room because that translates into people recognizing. Uh, and again, when you're at your highest level or when you're at least on the way to your highest level, people start to take notice. People start to give you a chance like, oh, OK, I see. I see. You know, they didn't they weren't sleeping on the pandemic. They were they were still hustling. They were still doing they were still contacting people. They were still trying to collaborate. Um, and I think that's how you stay in the room or at least get into a few at least. Okay, I want to recap because you just said so many great things there. So one, because my pillars in my coaching are strategy, technique, and practice. And so that's what you just defined is, is that to stay in the room, you must embrace all three things. And then you were talking about just like, whether it's during a strike, pandemic, at any time, it's, you're always should be honing your skills. Right. The industry shut down, but you didn't shut down. <laughs> right. But it's the same thing. It's a holiday. Any of those things. Um, and two, to stretch the metaphor as well, by the way, when we have slowdowns in our careers, which happens to everyone, you know, we have peaks and valleys, there's also um, 
the notion of sometimes we're lying fallow and this is where we can feel stuck or frustrated, but we may be actually germinating underground. Like you need to, you know, work with me on this metaphor, but the whole idea is like when we're growing and planting and blooming, you know, the soil has to regenerate. Mm -hmm. It has to get nutrients again. It has to rest. So to your point, like, so sometimes you're, you know, that's actually in itself is doing something um, because it's a mindset. And so then you're like, okay, so what do I have to do to uh, replenish or, you know, get nutrients back into my thing? And so sometimes, you know, that is self audit or, um, you know, working on the mindset. And um, I love that you identified techniques. And then you also talked about, because this is where I think you've also done such a great job. And you talked about it last time is the focus on relationship building. Absolutely. And you've identified people. And then also you successfully transitioned when you had regime changes or, you know, just management shifts where you're working and being there and saying, how can I help you? Yeah. Which it, is a very someone, different someone, thing to say and, than like, well, so what are they going to do for me now? Right. So I, I forget who told me this. This was years and years and years ago. I think it, it might've been a class. It might've been something, but they're like the, their number, their favorite thing to hear is how can I make your life easier? So I've been every, like, I swear every single email I've ever written for like the past years has, I always end with, and please let me know how I can make your life easier because it's the truth. It's like, can you make, uh, like this industry is already hard enough. Can somebody make my life easier? And I am, I'm here. I will volunteer as tribute to make your life easier and make this production smooth and give you the best on-camera performance. It's, it's, it's really relationship building. And it's the old adage. It's not what you know, it's who you know. And it's the absolute truth. So I love that because what you're actually also talking about is imagine if you stop and think about that before you do anything. I love that you actually articulate that in your correspondence, but imagine too is, um, and this is great for anyone listening, is like, you know, I want to pitch or I want to introduce myself or I want to go get this thing. And if, if you made that one of your checklist questions, what can I do to make their life easier? How do I identify that? And yes. you identified all these things that you've done to get in the room and stay in the room that weren't about luck. So let's sit there with a second. You focus on things you can control. Writing a thank you note is something that you can control. Being 100%. polite is something that we can all control. Being on time, you know, as much as possible. I was going to say, I live in New York City. So being on time, <laughs> but that's why you leave early. But you think about like your energy, again, when you're talking about things to do during the pandemic or a striker when there's downtime or on a hiatus, is that's a great time to look at it's like, how are my headshots? Do I need to, to, should I update my LinkedIn profile? Do I need mm -hmm. the time to update my bio? Because how you present yourself is one of the things that you control. Yeah, and it's and it goes back to another one of my favorite mantras: stay ready, so you never have to get ready. That's it. Oh my god, spooky! I just okay. That's going on the tote bag and the mug. <laughs> <laughs> stay ready, so you never have to get ready. It's the truth. Here's a question for you: because you have, you know started and you and and just to also give uh listeners who are new to the bookie elegbity universe that um you know before you created your show you just didn't like walk in the door off the street i mean you've had you have many serious credits as as a producer and have hosted and done a lot of things along the way and so i wanted to get is also you know when do you know that it's time to pivot or adjust because it's like the, because the industry evolves the only constant is change. And so sometimes even if we've, you know, X, Y, Z has worked for us for a long time, sometimes it's not going to work anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a, that's a, that's a hard question for me because I, uh, as much as I want to say, I embrace change. Uh, I do not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I hold on to things for dear life that I should not do. Um, so for those of you that are like me, it's it's a gut it's really a gut feeling um so i mean i've done a lot in behind and in front of the camera and it's always a feeling like and it, it never never it's not indigestion <laughs> it's it's not butterflies it's not you know the burrito that's coming back up um it's your it's it's your gut it's your intuition and i i feel like people I don't know if it's this the noise out here, if it's social media, people aren't listening to their gut and their intuition. Everyone knows. And I and I and I truly wholeheartedly believe this. Everyone knows. 
Like, I don't believe in the, you know better, you do better. People know what to do. They choose whether or not they're going to do it. Um, so oh, explain that to me more. I like that. So like, uh, meanwhile, I think Oprah is going to blackball me from here on out because her mentor, Maya Angelou, always used to say, well, when you know better, you do better. And I disagree. Everyone knows better. You know not to cheat, but you choose to do it anyway. You know, you know that person's wrong. That person's wrong for you, but you choose to get in a relationship with them anyway. Whether it's for, you know, self love, self gratification, whatever. You know that job is not going to fulfill you, but you're going to do it anyway. You made a choice because the rent is due. So everyone knows better. You choose not. You 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 have the choice whether you want to do it or not. And are but you saying? Ahead. Wait, I'm interrupting you one more time. Are you saying too that? Um... Part of that is the, because people choose somehow or they're not listening to their intuition, that their, their body and their subconscious is actually telling them, giving them the information, and somehow we're choosing to ignore it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know that. You know that guy is not right for you. You know, but, you know, he's got the abs. He's so cute. And your gut is saying, don't do it. It's, he going <laughs> to drag you to hell. And you still do it anyway. So we're not listening to the gut. And I feel like that's one of the one thing that I I think that's another superpower is that my intuition is strong. And you know, it comes in waves. You know, when you know it, it'll be like a little whisper, mm, I don't think this is right for you. But you know, you put it down, you're like, all right, you know, but the rent is due. I need to, I need to pay my rent. You know, and then it comes out in louder ways with you know your boss disrespecting you or something. And you're like, oh. You put it down again. And then, you know, later on down the road, then out of nowhere, they fire you. You know what I'm saying? And it hits you like a ton of bricks. When you knew already that you should have been gone from the get-go. So what I'm saying is just listen. Pay attention. Don't listen to the outside world. Forget about social media. Forget about your parents, your brother, your sisters, your friends. Just listen to your own self. You'll know. Every single job I've ever had. I've heard the voice. So when I was working at CBS uh, behind the scenes, um, literally, it was maybe a year or so before my fifth year anniversary. And it was just, I swear I was in my office. And listen, this was, a, this was a dream job. I was flying all over the country. We were producing this and that. And blah, blah, blah. It was great. Um, staying at the Beverly Wilshire, I was feeling glamorous. <laughs> so it was a dream job. It just wasn't my dream job. And I was at my desk in my office and literally, you got to get out of here. You got to get out of here. This is not leading you towards the Oprah dream. This is not getting you where you feel you want to be at in life. You have to leave. It, I swear to you, it was like someone came into my ear and screamed that you have to go. And that was the day I decided I, I gave myself a year to figure it out, save as much money as I could. And I had to leave. And a year later, I left. You know, Buki, if this TV thing doesn't work out for you, you'd make such a good life coach. Um, <laughs> you know, people have <laughs> said that, but I don't know. I'm 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 not as nice as everyone thinks I am. I'm, I don't I'm have a, to be nice. I'm, I just a, little, you're I'm impactful. a drill sergeant. <laughs> but I meant, so well said. So now, um, you know, because I want to circle back to the staying in the room. So one, I love what you said, because when you listen to the voice and then you had a strategy as opposed to a knee jerk reaction. Like I got to go. And then you, you know, give notice emotionally, but you know, you had a strategy and you're, and I'm sure you probably thought through, it's like, how much money do I need? You know, and if I, in these situations, like what's my right. budget, how do I cover this looking for jobs? So that's a very important component because what I'm getting at is there was a um, heart and soul and brain connection going on. You listen right. to your intuition and then you connected that to your conscious thought. Like, okay, so then how am I going to do this? Which is fabulous. The other thing that I want to circle back to staying in the room is the pivot is because things change. Management changes. Market forces change. A bunch of different things. Is, I mean, because we're living through such a volatile period in media anyway. Oh, that yeah. it's war. Uh, you know, like how money is made and sponsorships and and um and all of that and by the way nobody has any answers right or you nobody knows actually what's happening so that's an example of i meant that being able to um adapt to stay in the room and i think part of that then is it's on us to educate ourselves to always be researching to keep up with what's happening mm -hmm. which can be hard sometimes we're working really hard 
Well, that's <laughs> and that and I feel like that too is also part of staying in the room, like reading about your industry. Where is it going? This, this, and that. Like you know, we you can't just sit idle by and just be twiddling your thumbs. Like you need to know. Oh, Disney just bought Hulu. Okay, that's interesting. Or you know, all the streamers, ooh, they're they're doing a big squeeze. They're cutting out. They're cutting a lot of shows. They're not really greenlighting a lot of things. Like staying abreast of this industry that you want to be a part of so much is also a big, big, big way to stay in the room, in my opinion. And I'm going to say that's any room, even if I'm at outside of the media space, that this Absolutely. is just, you know, sort of common sense advice. And I did want to circle back to what we talked about a minute ago. I think it's human nature to dig in our heels. I don't know anybody. I mean, maybe there are some people who are hard wired to be like super changers, but I think it's normal for many of us to be, it's like, I worked really hard and, and it's like, What's wrong with getting comfortable for a little while? Well, yeah. what's wrong with getting comfortable for a little while is getting stuck when you're comfortable. Because <laughs> once you win that award, you got to keep going. There's no resting on your laurels. Now I got to do the next one. It's the <laughs> truth. That's very true. And right. it's so funny that you, um, oh my goodness, you just mentioned another one of my favorite mantras. Um, comfort is the killer of all dreams. Never get comfortable. Never get comfortable stretch as hard as you can because as soon as you as soon as you start laying back and start getting comfortable mm -mm -mm, it's not going to happen never get comfortable oh okay let's talk about that because i'm really curious in your mind is the inverse of comfortable uncomfortable or is it actually something else mm. is it because when we're trying to define comfortable it's it's because it's what's happened is we've fallen into the sort of trap if right. you will so it because what i want to get at is um that to be the opposite is not necessarily uncomfortable it means that um you're always in shape or in fit or sharpening your tools or something yeah in that in that realm yeah because it's like um you know perfect example let's say someone you know she won't, wants to be good morning america and she gets a job at a local TV station. It's nice. It pays the bills. And then she's there for, you know, two years. But she still has the, the dream to be number one, net, you know, number one GMA, Robin Roberts. And then, you know, she gets a little raise. Okay, this is feeling good. I'm able to buy that new car. Cool. And then five years passes. And then seven years passes. And then 10 years passes. Now, I know the car was nice, but was it worth giving it up when you could have had so much more? It goes back to that delayed gratification, too. Um, so for me, I mean, listen, I'm never comfortable. <laughs> I'm always trying to, to stretch as much as possible, even for this third season. Everyone's looking at me like I'm crazy because of the things I want to do. But, you know, it's just I don't want to look back and say, hmm, I should have just kicked it up a notch right there. Or I could have taken it home there. So that's why I always say, don't get comfortable. It it just it just won't work. And that that's not even in our industry. That's just in life. Because a lot of people get comfortable in jobs, comfortable in relationships, comfortable in different things. And then you look at your life five years down the road and you're like, I hate this job and I hate this guy. So <laughs> what do I do? That's 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 what I mean by don't get comfortable. Yeah, I'm really taking all of this in. So just thinking about this, like processing, because you know when you get to my age. So part of it is um, for anybody who's suddenly feeling like an anvil on their chest, going, "Wow, Buki has set such a high bar," um, <laughs> because it can be as much as um, or uh, simplifying it as much as like always being learning new skills or finding new ways of challenging yourself 100%. every every year. Hundred um, percent. And so, because I actually just had this question of myself was trying to identify the difference between my comfort zone and doing what I'm good at. And are they the same thing or am I doing, so do you know what I mean? It's like, am I playing to my strengths versus like staying in a comfort zone? Absolutely. I mean, and for me, I mean, I can, you know, when I left CBS, uh, I took a $40,000 pay cut. Uh, so when I say I was not comfortable, okay, because I am not that type of guy. All right, I'm not a you know rough and tumble. All right, I I need I need my glam. All right, I I need I need my Whole Foods. I need the good stuff in life. But yeah, I mean, but 
I took a forty thousand dollar pay cut, but you couldn't tell me that I wasn't making a hundred thousand because I was aligned and on the path and on the road that I've always wanted to be on. So for me, it was in terms of the wallet, but in terms of I like I I could never have gotten here if it were not for that for being so uncomfortable and getting myself uncomfortable because I could have done that CBS job forever, forever. That happens to a lot of people. That's a really powerful anecdote, Buki, because um, you understood value as being more than the dollars. And that is a very brave and bold move. And that gets into, you know, that luck is for the brave kind of thing, because yeah. you took um, the harder path, which wound up being the right path. That's where we get into like the false notion of comfort zones are not safe. It's not a safe place. No. And I mean, it, it, it's just, and it's all, and like we said in the early beginning, delayed gratification. There's nothing better than delayed gratification because it's so sweet. <laughs> it's so sweet. So, you know, I took that $40,000 pay cut, but now I'm making way more than what I was, would have been making if I was still at CBS. So again, it's all about that delayed gratification. Well, I know how that goes because I launched my own business and it was the same thing. It was like so scary and not exactly. having a And net even though it's you doing your amazing self and what you love and the newsletters are amazing. I hope everybody's reading, oh, you. Um, you know, to start a business that is definitely not in anyone's comfort zone. And yet you go forward and then it winds up being the, like the greatest thing I ever did. And there you go. And it's like, I'm so grateful that I was forced to do it. or you know that like life happened exactly. and that um and that we had adapt to life and then that goes back to again you know strategies to stay in the room maintain relationships I couldn't have launched my business without the relationships that I had it's all about the relationships send those thank you notes remember people's names I swear I will I've never forgotten a birthday in my entire life because those things matter those things matter you know what, to your point too, something else that we can all do that's within our control, and I talk a lot about it on the podcast, is um, instead of doom scrolling on social, um, be intentional on social and actually leave meaningful, kind, thoughtful comments for people. 100%. Oh, I'm all, I'm all about the you get it. Anytime someone like just books a job or anyone is doing well, you got to give them their flowers always even uh, honestly there are people i'm not am i like besties with of course not but again everyone deserves to have a light shown on them everyone deserves their flowers everyone deserves to feel uh like they're being seen and heard uh and why why not you be the one to see and hear someone be consistent with it um the one thing that happened after the emmy wins is that a lot of people came out of the woodwork and I mean, that's, that's nice, <laughs> but it doesn't feel genuine. Even if it is genuine to you, it, for the person that is on the other, on the receiving end, it doesn't feel genuine. Uh, I just say, be consistent with it. Check in with people. It doesn't take anything to write a text message, just checking in on you or, you know, leave a comment on their Instagram. Because if I haven't heard from you in seven years, haven't said two words to you in seven years, I think... That's a little odd, <laughs> but that's just me. So we talked about this in the last episode was the, and then what aspect of this? Because this is about, you know, I got in the room, right? And we're all like, yay, yay, yay. And, and I'm making my show fantastic. Bravo. I mean, statistically enormously rare. So, so proud of you, but it goes back to, you can't be comfortable is you always have to be asking yourself and then what, mm -hmm. and then what, and so what's, can you share what your current and then what is? Um, what is the end then what? <laughs> That's the real question. It's so funny. Um, I think I mentioned this on the last one, but I remember Halle Berry saying in an interview when the, the interviewer asked her, you know, was it easier to get in the room or was it, or it was it harder to get in the room or was it harder to stay in the room? And she said, every day is a fight. And it's so, I feel so bad because Taraji P. Henson was just on an interview for The Color Purple. Uh, and she was in tears. She's so tired. And it's like, hi. <laughs> and this is this is Boo Boo Kitty Cookie Lion from Empire for crying out loud, Golden Globe winner. Um, I'm always asking myself, and then what? The the thing that I'm realizing, because again, I'm a very 
OCD eight type person is that there is no set path. There is no set path. I mean, there are people that are right now on entertainment shows that have never been an entertainment correspondent ever. You know, uh, there are people that are doing incredible things that have never done it before, have no experience in it, but they're killing it right now. So there's no set path. So for me, I like to keep myself open to all the possibilities. Um, and then what could be so many things? Uh, I would love to, you know, I really want to do a children's show for some odd reason. I just, I, I've I've been obsessed with Mr. Rogers. I have 3,000 sweaters. So I feel like a, a children's show is like in my purview. I feel like I can do it. But really, I'm just, I'm just sitting, I just want to get through the third season. <laughs> let me get through the third season let me turn it up a notch. Let me let me deliver and raise the bar. Um, and let's see where life takes us. Oh, amen to that. And I and I, I just want to acknowledge and salute what you just said is the constantly accepting your path is your path. Yeah. There is no, there is no course. You can literally, literally do exactly what Oprah did. You'll you won't be Oprah. You can do exactly what Meryl Streep did you're not you that that was their path your path especially you got to consider the time the 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 social structure that we live in everything that's going on is different your path is your path don't look over to the right don't look over to the left don't look behind you stay on your path i adore you buki elegbity i <laughs> uh, can't wait for you to come back for your hat trick <laughs> I don't know what that hat trick is going to be, but we'll figure it out. All right. Thank you so much. And thank you for listening to Camera Ready and Able. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a five-star rating. It's much appreciated and really helps. If you're interested in media training or help with career strategies, please shoot me a note via my website, ableintermedia.com. And be sure to download my free ebook, 12 Tips for Success on Camera.